Welcome to lesson five in David Wong's wooden dummy course. And remember, this course is designed so that you can learn with or without a wooden dummy. So let's go. In the last lesson, we ended up in here, with the Tan Sao and Lo Dai Zhe. So now the next move, I'll show you in sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do that one more time. So we're here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those are the next moves in this lesson. If you want to get more amazing, awesome videos like this from me, make sure you subscribe to this channel, click the bell, and get notifications for new videos coming out. Also comment and like on this video and share with friends and help support this channel so we can make more content like this for you. Let's continue with the footwork. So from the last section, we ended up here. Your toes are pointed 45 degrees. Right foot is here. Left foot is slightly behind the dummy arm. So your first step is going to step about here. So around one third the way of the box. And then the back feet follows and then you take a tiny step, then you step to the corner of this box, then you step here, you pivot, and now you're 45 degrees facing the other direction, and this foot is slightly behind this dummy arm. Then we're gonna to step to the middle of that box, and then this feet follows. Now we're pointing this direction, but we're gonna rotate your right foot back into the Bai Zhang position. So from the starting position, I'm here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're back here. And one more time, starting from here. I'm going one, tiny step, pivot, and then face back into the straight Bai Zhang position. Now let's work on the arms. So from Tan Sao and Dai Zheng, we're going to do a double Gan Sao, then Quan Sao. Then we're going to switch Tan Sao and Dai Zheng. It's just the same on the left side, where we ended up in the last section. Then we can do another double Gan Sao. Then we do a Kao Sao. And then we do a Hun Sao and Dai Zheng. From Tan Sao and Dai Zheng, double Gan Sao, Guan Sao, and step Tan Sao and Dai Zheng again, and then you do a double Gan Sao, and then do a Hun Sao, also called a Kao Sao, and do another Gan Sao on top, now you do a Hyun Sao with this hand and Dai Zheng like this, okay? One hand at a time. Start with your right hand only. So we started here. We're gonna go step and do a high Gan Sao. Tiny step, do a low Bang Sao. Then you step over here, you pivot, and you do a Tan Sao. And then we're gonna go low Gan Sao, and then we're going to pivot the right foot in, and then do a high Gan Sao, do a Kao Sao, and that's it. So right hand again, step with high Gan Sao, Tiny step with a low bong sound. Step to the corner of the box. And as you do the pivot, do the tan sao. Then you step to the middle of the box, do a low gan sao. Then you do a high gan sao. And then you do a kao sao. Now let's show you the left hand. So here, starts here. First is the low gan sao then a Quan Sao or a Tan Sao, 
Then I step over here as I pivot. Then I do the low palm. Then I step to the middle, high gan sao. Then do a quan sao. Then do it a low palm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look at the hand positions in more detail. So from the last one, we ended up like this. So the Tan Sao, many mistakes that people make are being it too close or too far away. So you want to have a elbow low, and you want to have this about 135 degrees. And also the palm should be fairly flat. Another mistake that people make is they have their Tan Sao like this or they hand their tan cell just straight, but it should be slight, almost flat, parallel to the ground. And the zheng, some mistakes that people make is they open their hand, their fingers, which is not a good idea because if your finger gets caught somewhere, then you might hurt your finger. So keep your fingers together like this. And the pressure is not the middle of the palm. You want to use the pressure on the lower part of this palm here. The second position is the double gan sao. So the gan sao, you always want to hit somewhere in the middle of the dummy arm in most cases. And you want to hit with this part, not the upper part. So you don't want to use the wrist, so to speak. You want to use this section, um, and you want to use this section in the form. And the next one, we're flipping up, and then we are doing the guan sao. So same, the position. The guan sao is basically a high tan sao and a low bong sao. Some important parts about, about your body position is that you are facing 45 degrees in comparison to the dummy. And um, you need to check it so that your arms are equal distance away. So one mistake that people do make is they have one too far than the other. Okay, they need to be equal distance so you can measure your elbows need to be equal distance away from you. So what you need to be aware of is to have your hips square in that direction so that your arms are equal distance. Because if your hips are turned this way, then one arm is gonna be too long and one arm is too short. If you turn this way, one arm is too long, one arm is too short. So you make sure your fit, hips are square towards the front here. So next position is the same on this side as the other side. Just now you have your Tan up here, and then your low palm down here. So because how the way the dummy is structured, in this case, because you're attacking, your left arm will be slightly extended further than your right arm. Some mistakes that people make are they, is that they don't step further and they don't step farther enough this way. They're too centered, so they end up crushing their, collapsing their tan cell like this. So when you're stepping, you make sure you step further, farther enough so that you have enough room so that your tan cell is not collapsed. But then it's not so far away that you can't reach the dummy. Okay? So that's why it's important to measure out your guide according to your body size. And usually we go by the feet size. So if you're a taller person, you may need to have bigger boxes so that you step further. Now coming back here, we do another one except we just reversed. Now we have a Gan Sao on the left and a low Gan Sao on the right. The low Gan Sao is a little bit further towards the front, whereas the Tan Sao is more in the middle of the dummy arm. Then the next one is a very important one, is the new move, it's called the Kao Sao or the Hun Sao. So look at this left hand. So what's happening is I'm gonna center back with my body. At the same time I am doing a circular motion with a hand as if I was trying to go around the dummy arm with my hand. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's the purpose of this in a little bit. Okay, so like this. So like this, and then like this. 
So that's what's happening with the left hand. With the right hand, something similar is happening. So as we go up here, we're doing this. Okay, let's do one hand at a time. So when you're here, you do a cow sao, you want to kind of be sneaky and swim your way as if you're swimming, swimming in so that your wrist clears this dummy and then fluidly turn it into a palm like that. Okay, so fluidly turn it into a palm. Now, because if you don't bring this hand in, you won't be able to do the palm because the dummy is in the way. So you got to clear your hand and then do the palm. And this one here, we're just doing this. So some people call this a fok sao. Some people call this a kao sao. The slight difference is fok sao is just weighing it downwards, whereas a kao sao is actually moving it sideways. Okay, so if there's actually pressure here, the dummy is gonna turn that way. If it's a, if it's a zat sao, it's, it's yanking it towards me. If it's a fok sao, it's just resting there. If it's a kao sao, it's actually turning it that way. So I'll explain these differences in the demonstration in a bit. Let me show you a drill that you can use to practice the double gan sao to kwan sao. So if you're just doing it by yourself, you can just practice doing it like this. So this comes up, comes up, like this. Okay, so what you're learning is how to replace hand over hand while you're rotating your body and pivoting at the same time. So here's a drill that you can do with a partner. So now let's say that we have two, two kind of protection here. We have the, the low bong sao, but we're not gonna do it down here because he's not punching me here. He's got his arm here. So with this, I can block his arm. And also I have a tan sao up here so I can block his arm. Okay, so I have two blocks on his arm. The drill is that he punches with the other hand I'm going to pivot and then switch so that I also have a bong sao on this arm and also a tan sao on this arm. All right, so he punches again. So there's a drill, I pivot and I use both hands to um, guide or block his punch. One more time. Okay, so now when I pivot, I don't wanna pivot so much that I'm facing all the way over there. I want to keep this fairly um, directed to its center line. So even though, do another one, even though I pivoted, I can still reach out and punch him in the center line. Okay, do it again. So even though I'm pivoted, I can reach, still reach out and punch him in the center line. So what the mistake that you could make, do it again, is you punch here, and then when you punch straight, it's missing him, okay? Uh, or if I do the other way, turn too much, I punch straight, I'm actually missing him. Okay? So when I pivot, I want to pivot, but actually I want to pivot just enough to guide his force away, but also keep center so that I can still attack his center line. So the drill you can do with the partner is pretty simple, like this. You want to keep it nice and tight, like that. And the key is to learn how to flip this underneath and bring it up and turn. Here's the next session. We're going to show you how to do the part this one, and then this one, and then this one. So in section four, we did the Tan Sao Lo Dai Zheng. Basically, we're stepping here, do the Tan Sao Lo Dai Zheng using the opposite direction. We'll show you how to apply that in a second. And then we do the double Gan Sao, high and low Gan Sao. Then we do a Kao Sao with another high Gan Sao. Then we do a Zat Sao or a, another Kao Sao and a low palm. So let's start here. Uh, we did this in lesson four, but now we're just moving towards the left. 
So he's putting pressure in here, right? And what I'm doing is just doing tan sao and then uh, low palm on this side. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Same as lesson four, except now we're on this side. I do tan sao and then I do a low palm on this side. Okay, so now we do the gan sao again. But here's what, here's what we want to do. So now when we pivot back in, okay, when we pivot back in, this is, I'm doing a cow cell, so a cow cell is here. That's the wooden dummy arm. I'm bringing this and opening it up with my hand. And then this comes out at the same time. So in the dummy form, it's a, actually a high gan cell. You can call this a jam cell or a chopping hand. So, so what I'm doing is actually, I want to open this up and then either chop in but his hand's blocking, so I'd rather just punch straight here. Okay, so one more time. The left hand is doing this. Okay, left hand is doing this. And make sure you don't go, whoa, like that. Just enough to hear, because the next move is I'm going to do a low palm here. So, and this combines with this. And then let's say his hand's in the way here. Then I do a zat sao and I do a low palm. So in the form, it's like this. Kao sao, right, his hand's in the way. Then I pull this down and I do a low palm or I can do uh, another kao sao. So I can bring this open again and do a low palm. So either way, so I remember I showed you when, when this comes up here, there's actually a few things you can do. You can do a cow sao, which is to open it up. You can do just a fuk sao, just to keep control of it. Or you can do a just sao, which is to pull it actually down or snap it down. So once again, you can do a cow sao or hun sao to open up. All right, and this can actually open up and open attack. Or you can just do a fuk sao, so, that's, so it controls his arm. Or you can do a zat sao, which is a snap down. If you're fuk sao, you don't want to do palm because then his hand's gonna block you, right? So if you do fuk sao, actually you wanna do a punch. Or you wanna do zat sao, you wanna do a punch. Okay? If you do kao sao, you can do a punch or a palm either way because his hand's all the way up there. So in the form, once again, it's like this. You have this here, you open it up, you do jam sao, his hand's in the way, then you do a zat sao just to control it, and then you do a low palm. And then you can actually repeat the exercise on this side, so you can go open up here, and then his hand's here, you can jam sao, right? And then control his hand here, do a low palm, and control his hand and punch here. Another technique you can use is the cow sao into the palm, right? So this is something that you might use in a fight, is let's say you end up here and then you want to clear this hand without using this hand. So you, you can actually just bring it down like that. Okay. So I'm like this, can't quite reach him or you somehow block it. You can actually circle it and then use that. Uh, same on this hand, right? Let's say you're uh, you kind of blocked it, right? I can bring it down and then use that. So it's a bigger motion, like in the dummy, we're just doing this, right? In the dummy, we're just doing this, okay? But you can make a motion a little bit bigger and then turn it into palm. So I'm swimming into, into the palm like this, swimming, cool. Or cow sao, low palm, right? And this hand will be like cow sao, low palm. So it's good if um, you know, somebody blocks you, use that energy that he blocks you with. If somebody blocks you, use that energy that he blocks you with, and then now it's totally open here, right? And then in the form, it's like boom, boom, and then can set cell, and then punch. If it's this hand, he blocks me, right? Open up, right? And then I can do a punch, I can do a punch, pull this down, and punch. So let me show you that again. 
Let's say I'm on the right side. He punches, he blocks, then I can actually open it up. And then it, use this, use the sinking motion and the palm snap to, to go into the ribs. So it's more, less of a, it's not really like a strike because you feel that, how much did that go through? Yeah, it went through. A little bit, but then you got all this padding. Yeah. But if I just press, it's... Yeah, feel it a lot more. Right? Uh -huh. So instead of the energy being dispersed as an impact, it gets transferred deeper in actually through all this material and into his body. I'm not gonna go for his ribs, I'm gonna go lower so it doesn't hurt him. You can go, you can go feel that, right? Yeah. But if you go for the ribs or diaphragm, you can break somebody's ribs, I've done that before. So on this one, it's the same thing, I'm punching, but then he's blocking me with a lot of force. I can bring this down and then you can use that, right? Yeah. And then punch. Or I can punch, and then this is on the way. Then I snap this one. Oh shit! Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now it's this side. I punch here. I bring it in. Make sure this hand is guarding. I do the low palm, but then I can also punch here. And just snap this one down and do a punch up here. Thanks for watching David Wong's channel on Chi Life Mastery. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you want more lessons, make sure you click the playlist of Wooden Dummy Wing Chun Training, and you can get all the lessons for free. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the like and comment. If you have questions about what I taught you today, make sure you add them in the comment section. So until next time, use the chi and prosper.